Hello, welcome back to the channel. Got a watch unboxing for you. Currently, I'm wearing my Casio. This is the DW291H. It's a watch I reviewed recently. Please check out that video. Really loving this as an everyday driver for me. But today, I've uh, picked up a different brand, and I can't wait to show it to you. This is from Armatron. This is the 408474, and it's a little bit of a retro vibe. Let's get started. All right, before we get to our unboxing, let's go ahead and jump on Amazon.com, where we see this is a highly rated watch, and it is currently on sale as of filming this at $29 and change. Currently lists for $41.25 standard. Got that octagonal stainless steel throwback case, giving you that 80s vibe to it. Yet still touting it as a sport watch. You've got 50 meters water resistance. Probably the only knock on paper I see is the acrylic. I'd rather see mineral there, but I'm nitpicking. Great dimensions, should fit a lot of folks. What's not to love? Great specs at a great price. So without further ado, let's pull the box open and see what's inside. And I like how we've got a, looks like a tin can, Armatron branded, and it looks like half a tin can or two thirds of a tin can. Where's the top? Sort of how it's presented. You got the watch exposed in a semi-metallic case, which is nice. Would like to see a lid on this thing, but it's all about the watch, as we always say. Let's zoom in and get a closer look at that acrylic face and sort of blacked out surroundings there got some of our features listed on the packaging albeit somewhat generic because i don't think this one does include a countdown timer we do have a zip tied in little watch and i'll put some of the vitals up on the screen so you can see what drew me to this watch as we try to get this thing out of the box and i gotta get that zip tie clipped and we'll uh, get a closer look here Let's try to pull this watch out and there we go. We have a nice little foam pillow and it looks like a little instruction pamphlet tucked away. Get this protective film off of our beautiful but highly scratchable acrylic window. Really love the beautiful brushed stainless steel case Got some beautiful lines on this thing, and I love the subdued black and teal detail around the window. Gives you a nice sporty but clean look. Nice looking bracelet, stainless steel. You have the sliding clasp, unbranded. But first impressions are very nice looking watch especially for the price point it's really hard to make too many complaints here and i won't even start let's scroll through our modes and we've got these four protruding plunge style buttons see we have our time window our alarm we have our stopwatch start stop and you reset i think i can figure this out without the instructions then our time two, our second time and then we're back to our main window. And again, we've got the day and the date at the top. Then we have our hour, minute, and seconds. Very straightforward setup. And as I suspected, there is no countdown timer, but we do have a nice chronograph. We do have a, looks like a side fire light. We'll see how that does to light up this watch in the dark in a moment. But... Let's just continue to explore and finalize our first impressions and uh, very happy so far. Finishing up our unboxing, let's take a look at our little owner's manual. It's a little leaflet of paper, but hopefully we shouldn't need too much instruction with our pretty simple form factor and operation. does have a limited lifetime warranty from Armatron, as do all of their watches, I believe. So that's good to know. Let's take a closer peek at this stainless steel band and sliding clasp system. Pretty straightforward stuff here. You snap it open and closed to hook and unhook. And you'll see there's a little hook bar that we hook into before we 
clasp it and snap it shut. And it's pretty tactile and easy to use. It is a sliding clasp, so you shouldn't have to remove any of the sections of the bracelet, which is nice. Should fit a lot of folks without a lot of adjustment. As we look closer at our case back, you can see we have that Armatron branding. We've got some etched or blasted wording there. We've got the model number and of course 165 feet water resistant. As we see, we have a snap-on case back to get to your battery change. Armatron recommends you take this to a service center because I know these can be stubborn with the gasket, but very doable if you have a proper watch repair kit and or you've got experience doing this. I believe the battery is a 2032, pretty standard lithium battery. But if you know for sure, please chime in because uh, Armatron did not list the spec on what battery this watch takes. We've got our calipers out. Let's just confirm some of the dimensions here. We're just over 34 millimeters left to right on that case. And lug to lug, we're right at 39 millimeters. And confirming our thickness. I don't want to squeeze too hard because I don't want to scratch that mineral. Just over nine is what I'm getting on the thickness. If we go outer, button to button, just over 37. Those buttons protrude quite a bit. Inside the lugs at the band, we're at 18 millimeters of width. And we tapered down to 17 and a half millimeters, roughly at the clasp. Let's get some weight on this all stainless steel watch. And we are at 2.82 ounces. So going to also get grams for my friends overseas. And we are right at 80 grams. So very respectable and mild mannered weight and dimensions on this retro watch gonna slow the frame down real quick and give you a better look at the decaled acrylic lens on this cool watch you see the armatron established 1975 branding in the upper left hand corner you've got that awesome teal octagonal surround as well as the swimmer and our alarm chronograph call out a little bit of shadow boxing there with our setback LCD liquid crystal display. But I guess that's adding to the retro vibe. You can also see that the acrylic glass is not recessed at all. So I definitely see some scratching going on in the future. But love that seam at the stainless steel. Fit and finish look awesome. Well, mostly awesome. I wanted to call out a couple of hot spots. The back of the case where we have the etching is definitely done by a machine, and it's pretty sharp. There's some, some roughness going on there. As well at our band where we meet the lugs, a little sharp on the edges and on the shoulders of the band, but overall, it's so hard to complain at this price point. No branding on the band, but we do have our stainless steel call out there on the underside of the adjustable clasp. And very happy with the quality of the bracelet. The watch looks a lot more expensive than the price point. So very hard to make huge complaints about this watch. And then I got to the backlight which I think is a side fire light still even though I've seen folks calling it an EL backlight it looks like this is the weak point here and I'm going to hit the lights and try to adjust the camera but it is not amazing so two big faults on this watch are the fact that we have an acrylic glass and we also have a not so amazing backlight or side light, but again, this is a retro watch and 
Not everything was amazing in the 80s, including looking at a digital watch in the dark. But a very minor call out, but I can overlook that. I pretty much have to overlook it because I can't really see what time it is right now. No, it's it's a little bit better than what the camera's showing, but it's very hard to see. And compared to my Casios and G-Shocks and Timex, this is a shortcoming of this watch. But hey, there you have it. As I mentioned earlier, your setup is very intuitive. Pretty easy to get this watch dialed in, pun intended. You have your A, B, C, D plunger buttons. Holding down your A puts you into your adjust time mode. And you can toggle through your hours and minutes. Long press to speed scroll through and find the right numeric character to dial in the time. Pretty easy stuff. And if you've used a digital quartz watch before, this one should be pretty intuitive. And of course, you can scroll through and zero your seconds, which is all important when you're trying to synchronize your time pieces. So pull out a nice Casio or G-Shock, whatever you got. And we're pretty close there. So real easy to set and just a nice, practical, straightforward. You can hold down your adjust button, your A button to set your alarm. And if you hit your C button or your upper right hand corner button, you can turn on the alarm and of course the chime toggle that on and off pretty intuitive stopwatch get your C button upper right hand corner button to start and stop to reset we hit our A button and that resets the clock of course now we have our last window which is our second time zone you can set this up much like you set up your main timekeeping window. And here we are back at that screen. Pretty simple and very intuitive. No complaints on the controls. Let's do some quick side-by-side -side comparisons here. We have our Casio, our F91W, a, dare I say, legendary retro watch. When you think of Old style, vintage style, 80s, 90s, digital watches. It's hard not to think of the F91W. And such a great watch. Probably the only Achilles heel of that watch is going to be that backlight or side light. But um, what a great timepiece as far as just legibility and controls and accuracy lightweight minimalist straightforward design just giving you some side-by-side -side comparisons here our casio is going to be quite a bit smaller but not a bad thing so lightweight and such an easy to read and wear watch let's pull off our awesome casio dw 291 h and just show you how small our armatron is compared to this this is basically a g-shock-esque looking casio even though it's not a g-shock a uh, very large, significant sized watch. A lot of watch for such a great price. But just giving you some size perspectives there with our Casio. God, I love this watch. 
All right, I mentioned a G-Shock, so I had to pull out my GWM 5610, which I currently am riding with a NATO strap right now. One of my favorite all-time watches. Again, if you're familiar with this watch, hopefully this gives you some size perspective or comparison to our Armatron Vintage Sport. And... You can see pretty significant difference in size. So now for the most important thing, how is this thing on the wrist? And let's go ahead and see if this thing fits me out of the box. I have six and three quarter inch wrists and look at that, it fits perfectly. No, it doesn't. So obviously I'm gonna have to adjust our sliding clasp and to do that just take a small screwdriver and we will just open up the hinge plate there and scoot our clasp downstream a little bit and then re-engage it and it clamps down and stays put so very easy and let's go ahead and try this again we've got our adjustment complete and we just simply overlap the two band sections and hook in to that crossbar and then snap our clasp down and we got a perfect fit and a gorgeous bracelet style stainless steel retro slash vintage looking sport watch that is easy to adjust and looks and feels great it's light it's low profile and easy to control, easy to get to the buttons. Not pulling too many hairs out right now, so that's nice. It's comfortable. And yeah, I love it. You're going to be able to put a sleeve over it. Nice. Dress it up, dress it down. Wear it to work, wear it to school, wear it to a date, wear it anywhere. And you've got some awesome conversation and great timekeeping on a watch that I really like. Well, that's my take on this very cool vintage series watch from Armatron. Highly recommend you pick one up. Let me know your thoughts. Really appreciate you tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Nice.